We are back with the Not So PG Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Vigilante, and my co-host... Gianni Vigilante. And we are bringing back a very special guest, Garrett Nolan. Internet sensation, beautiful human being, and has a lovely beard, as you can see. Oh, that's hot. We, we've had Garrett on before, but it was when Gianni was out of town, and I needed a guy to come on, show us a good time, and it actually ended up being the second best podcast on the YouTube channel. Second most viewed. Okay. So we had a great time, so then we said, hey, if we bring Gianni back on to co-host with Garrett... Now we just got a double whammy, Manny. So how are you feeling today, brother? I'm feeling really good, Peter. I'm feeling good too. I'm I happy think to be I here. think today is gonna be a good move forward for the podcast because this is our first three man podcast setup. I think it's gonna be a good move forward to see how we do moving things in with the guest, with the camera angle. Let us know how you guys feel about that camera angle right there. We're freaking loving it. And Gianni, how do you feel about co-hosting with me now? To I have a third person in here. I'm fucking loving it. I'm fucking loving. Kind of getting too. the nippies a little wet. We're we're doing it right now. <laughs> Suckle, suckle. suckle yes, suckle, yeah, dude. exactly. Yeah, suckle we're doing team. it. Yeah. I think we should dive right in, though. And Because I, I had a question for you, Garrett. I feel like you'd have a really good take on this. Okay. I was curious. Do you think that liking somebody's... While in a relationship, liking somebody's Instagram picture is cheating? Like, if you have a girlfriend, obviously, if you go like another girl's bikini picture, is that considered cheating? Right. Um, I think this is a question that's, like, touching some untrimmed grass. <laughs> like, it, it's... There's no great way to answer this. Um... I but think I, there is, but go on, go on. I, I think it's I think it's highly situational, meaning like where's your relationship at? Um, what what do you two value in that relationship right now? I think if it's in the like infancy of your relationship within the first year period, two years, I don't think it's going to be very healthy or appropriate. But so you think later in the relationship it starts being cool because I think movies. Well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like that just means you gave up. No, no, uh, I gave I up think on that, saving uh, it. As you grow as a couple, mm -hmm. you start to realize that, okay, their intentions of liking a certain photo um, may not be what I thought it was in the first mm -hmm. year or two. But I think that you have to clarify that with them. Um, and I'm actually going to revoke everything I said. It's, probably, <laughs> it's just not healthy in general. Yeah, you still yeah, stay away from it. Well, here's my take on that. Yeah, let's hear yours. My take is if I'm not allowed to like a post, which means you think I'm doing something devious, right? Ooh. That means... Right, you can't post a bikini pic because now you're posting it for devious reasons. Because oh. if you think that I'm p liking that post for those reasons, then you're posting it for those same reasons yeah. for, to get other guys' because attention. Because if, if she's saying that this girl's take posting this posting it for, for me to for, like it for, and for male my, attention, exactly, and then you're giving it to her. So you're then posting it for more male aren't attention. Are you admitting that by you posting that bikini pic, you're also posting it for male attention? Exactly. I see where you're coming from. Indeed. Hmm. Hmm. I mean. I get what you're saying. I'm also, if, I, if I'm with a girl, I, I think I'm fine with them posting a bikini pic. I get they want to show, no, especially if they, they want to show their progress, how they're looking. Like, I'm not going to stop you. But if you're going to get do, the problem. But I do get what you're saying. But liking it is a little bit different. Because again, some <sighs> girls, I think just, I understand that take. But then again, I think also some girls, you know, they like posting a bikini pic once in a while. They're at the beach. They, they, they want to show it. They know they look good. No, go and it's for not it. Always, like, I get it. Yeah. And then it's very different for them to post that. And then also go like a picture of a guy holding his wang. Because then you're like, babe, why the fuck well, do you like Well, that's that? different. Is, is it different though? Because see, now we're, get, now we're getting into the other side <laughs> of the, no, no, the no, conversation. It's, it's, it would be the equivalent to a guy in a bathing suit, shirtless, and that would be the equivalent, no? <sighs> guy holding his dick. That's fucking, that's not a girl in a bikini. <laughs> I think that it comes down, and the reason I say like in that first year or two of the relationship, being in its infancy, is like there's a lot of ego going on. And I don't mean like egocentric, you're about yourself. I mean like you're going through a lot of fears, insecurities, mm -hmm resentment of like past future relationships all of this stuff that's going on um and i believe that you like over time this first year or two the purpose of your relationship is to grow with one another and ultimately break down your egos like you're going to become yeah. one consciousness almost with this other person um and when you do such a thing i think there's an understanding of like you're you're not liking this for that intent um obviously if you're going to go like something pretty you know risque yeah, that's questionable, but... Well, you tell me, why do you like bikini pictures, Garrett? <laughs> I'm a single male. I'll tell male. you why I like bikini pictures. <laughs> I'm a single male. <laughs> I'll tell you why I like them. <laughs> but I, I will say this, too. I'm 26 now, and at 22 years old, 23, 24, 25, and every year before that, um, you're in that brain development of where you, you just do it. It's part of your, your yeah. innate, natural like instinct to... Like, your chemicals within your body are just saying, like, this is where my energy needs to go. 
And now that I'm getting older, I'm realizing that, you know what, I have a lot more control over myself. I have a lot more control over things I never thought of. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I can look at a photo now and not feel the way that I did about it three years ago. Mm-hmm. So it just comes with maturity. Growing up. Maturity, growing up. Growing up. Treating, treating the new relationship with the lessons from the past. Yes, right? that's a huge one. Making sure that the person you're dating next is also on that same maturity scale that you're now on. Yep. Right? Yep. Yeah. But it gets tough, though, because people get so jealous, and it's, like, hard to even pull yourself out of that jealousy mindset because then, honestly, like, as much as we're talking about it, saying, like, oh, you can't post on that, like, how would you feel if your girl was the one going around liking a bunch of dudes' pictures? And it's like, mm, Not right. yet. It's like, why? Why eh, is but she You know what it is? I would never notice. That's the difference. Girls, girls, girls notice, know everything. I would never notice if my girl was like liking dudes' pictures. I just wouldn't. No, there's I no way. There's no way to know. How do you girls, even find that out? Girls are the biggest detectives in the world. They find out everything. They find out literally everything. You ever see the SpongeBob meme? It's like I knew this guy. Who knew this guy? Who knew this guy? Who knew, this guy, who knew this guy's cousin? And it's like, bro, like what? That's why when a, when a girl cheats, they almost. I don't want to say always, but they get away with it a lot more ease than the guys. Because at most, the guy's going to be like, oh, yeah, dude, like, I, I slept with this chick. And boy, maybe like, oh, yeah, she has a girlfriend. It's like, oh, shit, probably shouldn't do that again. And it ends there. Whereas if it's the other way around, the whole town finds out. <laughs> These girls talk, bro. Yeah. They talk. Yeah. Like, so true. Like, girls are just detectives. That's why you kind of got to, I don't know, you got to be, maybe we should turn into de- detectives. Maybe, like, us guys should start. Looking into things. Just, we don't. We just don't. Enough. We don't do. We don't have we that don't, piece. Yeah. In us. I would love to. I would find. It, I would find <laughs> I would have it, the energy. I would find it so fun and thrilling. However, I feel like the men that we are, our energy is just pushing towards like a transcending goal. Yeah. Above any of that for yeah. us, and I don't want to say like above that, because um, sure, being a detective <sighs> might be a cool purpose for somebody, but not for me. <laughs> Dude, it, it's. You ever, like, whenever you're younger, you ever, like, tell a girl something, and, like, the next day, everyone's like, dude, I can't believe you told Brittany that. You're like, you fucking Brittany, pissed. What the fuck, Brittany? <laughs> I told you that in good faith. Right. He's having all the I'm time. I'm waiting on my balls. I told you that. I didn't know. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I didn't tell Brittany that. Oh, but Oscar God. told the whole fucking world that. No, I'm kidding. Garrett, I got a question oh, for you, Garrett. Go on. Would you happen to have any weird kinks that we don't know about? I'll stop you there. We, you told us about the fucking. What? <clears throat> Which one? <laughs> what you, you told us about, <laughs> about spreader bar. You told us about that you, you connect girls that you're in love with. Yeah, that's not really with a, a bar from here to here. That's just a and bar. that you love that. Yeah, and that you love that. Wow, my legs are yeah. shaking. It was some like that. <laughs> that's incredible. Um, if, on. since we already spoke about that kink. Um, yes, we spoke about that something crazy kink. What's something that you like? You, something that you probably shouldn't you've say. You've done on and you've been like, I should not have liked that that much. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I. There's this one time, and this started kind of a, a series of many times. But oh, geez, here we go. I just had this. This might not sound too crazy, mm-hmm. but it in my head it was like this animalistic instinct came out in a really intimate moment, and I like gracefully grabbed her throat and put <laughs> applied some pressure, enough pressure that she enjoyed it. Yes. And uh, I just said, "Open your mouth," and she looked at me very, but she did it, and um, I just. Kept dropping saliva down her mouth. I feel until, like that's a common one. Yeah, yeah. and that's a common one. That's all I can think I about. Fucking right love. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's, I, I'm a guy that likes a lot of spit, but like I've never cared to like spit in somebody's mouth. Like that doesn't really do it for me. Like, cause oh. like I want to oh. be involved. <laughs> I want to be involved oh. in the spit. Like I want to. I want it to be like a deep, like very sexual, like Wait, make what? out section. You want to be like, involved in the spit? Yeah, because like if I'm just like getting it out of my mouth, I'm like from air, air tra- travel, like okay, spitting tell it, into <laughs> Tell it air like, travel it back into your ears. You I've, you only, I've only ever had one girl that was like, spit my fucking mouth. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't like, it wasn't a kink that I started and was like, dude, I fucking love that. Surprisingly. Because I am a guy that's into spit, but I could see how you could be into it. And she definitely was. Wait, what do you funny mean into sp- Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not going to pass that up. What? What do you mean into spit? What does that mean? Like, fuck you mean if you're, that? like, into, like, a lot of saliva, like, a lot of, like, making out, like, a lot of tongue action, there's, like, a oh, way to... Oh, okay, you could have said that in, you know, well, better. Well, well Peter, I don't talk- think I would... <laughs> 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 fucking, I thought you were, like, drinking saliva or some shit. <laughs> fucking scared me there, bro. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> I, I wouldn't ever projectile spit 
into anybody's mouth. However, you're like Lou Ying. I feel like well, I'm not, not quite Lou Ying. No, Lou Ying. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now he's but just, I, there's like uh, to like interconnect the mouths. You get a distance, right? Yeah. You get a distance from your partner. Yeah. And you just start. A, I wish I could do it for you right now, but it would just get all over. But you work it up as you're, you know, going through these intimate motions and movements. And then once you get enough, you let it just slowly string just down. Drool out. And then you have this connective, like physical, tangible oh, connection See, that's between where I her mouth line. and your mouth. And then you can slowly let it down their throat and you can connect <laughs> your mouths. It's, it's more of like a... The fuck are like you a, doing that? It sounds like when that. like the bully would hold the kid down and like slowly drop the <laughs> shit. That's like what I'm imagining right now. It might be similar uh, to that. Garrett's like drawing wait, full wait, spider webs on their face. <laughs> People love to hear me talk about this. Have you ever, have you ever gotten your ass eaten? Oh, yeah. I think it's a common one. I could see I'd be surprised if you didn't. I could totally see you yeah. on all fours. I, honestly? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I, I, I have asked. Oh. Really? Twice. Hey, because are, I wanted it to happen with this person. Mm. Um, you just imagine her just tongue in your butt? <laughs> yeah. Really? Okay. Is but, it because you have a Chewbacca butt? Yes. You a hairy ass guy? She yeah, was like, I'm why. not getting in there unless you No, she it. was very much so willing. And then as it... You know, it's one of those moments where you say... Oh, I could definitely do this. I'm all about it. Yeah. And then you, it starts happening. You're like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Listen, I need to go hop in the shower for a couple of hours. I need to maybe go get oh, of course. some proper, yeah, clean it. Anal deodorant. <laughs> and take care of this. Pro- I'm like, wait, I need to actually prepare for this. Yeah. I can't just, yeah. Like, I've been laying in bed for an hour. There's uh, something no, sweltering in there. Stuck you, down definitely, there man. you definitely got to prep for it. Even if you're the one giving, she yeah. definitely has to prep for it. I've never well. worried about that. I'll dive, I'll dive deep in any water. He's saying oh, he what? Care. You, you make he's sure saying, their asses are prepped? He's saying he'll throw her off the toilet and start eating. That's what he's saying. I have. Garrett, you stop it right now, Garrett. Uh, nah, nah, Garrett, nah. Garrett, you stop it right like now. Like mid-dookie, mid you like pulled it out of her ass Garrett, and said, I'm eating that. Garrett? <laughs> not, not quite. Garrett, not okay, quite. Right, okay. Thank God. What, what, what do you mean by that, though? What quite? Yeah, what quite? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I asked you elaborate. about kinks, and you guys start going, oh, it's a little spit. And then we get to other topics. And then you're, you're like, like yeah, ripping girls off toilets. Just ripping I mean, girls off the toilet. I think those are two <laughs> different things. I don't know. He's debating Listen. whether or not to get into it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm debating this. Okay, let me ask you this. Was it's she not doing like one there's no two? plural girls. This was only like one specific moment, you know, where yeah. she was on the toilet and she was minding her business. And, you know, I said, it's time to get off the toilet. And one thing led to another. But you pulled her yeah, off? Yeah, I did, I did some anal play with my mouth oh immediately after. Oh, my goodness. After. She was doing but number two? Was it? Wait, wait. Yeah. Was it because? Uh, she was doing number two. Yeah. That, that was, I don't think I could agree think, with it. I don't think I could agree with it. Was it because of that that you were ready to go? Or was it just like spur of the moment and it just happened? Was the poop getting you going? You I think guy? it was a, another animalistic moment. You're where, just feeling it. Yeah, there's like this, this creature within, within Garrett that just took over <laughs> and said... <laughs> It's time to experience something beyond. Dude, you're, uh, so. you, yeah, that's something, something wild to try. Yeah. You know what? I agree. You'd have to pay me a lot of money. Have you ever been golden showered now that we're on that topic? I could Wait, see you getting what? that. I'm sorry. I don't know what that golden shower? expression is. You're, you get peed on. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, just, Garrett, I, how I fucking come, knew how it. Come, Garrett, when we ask you, like, what's the craziest yeah, thing you've done? Yeah, what's the craziest thing you've done? You know what? Like, you know, I tied like, a girl we up. We gently kissed on the forehead. <laughs> okay. And then we start going into other topics, and you're like, oh, absolutely. Multiple times. <laughs> I, I always look at, I look at literally everything in life at this point this way. But, uh-huh. they're, you know, when you're in your early 20s. All you're surrounded by in your brain is sex. Yeah. So I looked at sex as like an artistic, spiritual approach for me. And I said, you know what? I don't need to let any of these moments, you know, mean anything superficial. I can dive literally deep into anything and everything. I can imagine. Literally. (laughs) I have, uh, yeah, you can imagine. (laughs) But I don't know. There's just so much, um, there's an art to intimacy. Yeah. I found that out and I'm like. You know, there's some like grotesque things that you can get into mm-hmm. that don't have to be so grotesque when you look at it from a different pers- like perspective. And we were talking about this scat play. Yeah, scat play. A lot of people scat love scat. Play? Yeah, yeah. Explain. That's that's, that's play just play with poop. With poop. Play with poop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, scat. Like yeah, I, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Whatever you do, don't <laughs> type it in. Don't type it in. Uh, I won't. It'll upset you. <laughs> that did not seem too promising. <laughs> I won't. I swear. <laughs> what was it called? 
<laughs> what was it called? <laughs> oh my gosh, wait, guys. Did you hear? No. There was a house in Virginia that, that, that police were about to issue a search warrant and the house blew up. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, blew yes, up. I saw that. You Holy shit. You gotta see this Bro, the, the house I'm blew aware. I'm aware that, up. Actually, yeah. Bro, look at the house. Let me tell you, Walter White is good. As they're, as they're, they're issuing the search issue. warrant? Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to bring up some conspiracy yeah. ideas. Um, I'm going to go with they were hiding a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go, yeah. Gonna, yeah. Oh my However, goodness. However, was it um, when I was in the military, they have the, uh, I used to train in Virginia a lot, but that's where they have the um, CIA and FBI like headquarters training yeah. uh, in Quantico. Yeah. Is it near that that you know of? Oh, shit. Because it no could have been that. like an been like agent a, yeah, of worker. some sort. No, I think they were probably dealing a lot of drugs <laughs> and trafficking situations I don't know. down there. I'm assuming. Maybe it wasn't. Dude, if Maybe you're prepared, dude, if in you're prepared. Yeah, dude, I'm with Garrett. Not, listen, they were so, probably some professional motherfuckers that knew if we get caught with this, we're better off saying the gas line boy. <laughs> and I think that's more like. I don't know happened. though, bro. Garrett's like, there were secret agents. The shit was good. <laughs> 007 jumped out the window. Like, no, I think they were probably dealing drugs outside yeah, of the Yeah, but house. what are the odds? In the boatloads. Yeah, but they had to get like an early And they call. said, oh, they got the search warrant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they, they boom. Yeah, but they had to get an early call though, because to create a gas leak and then an explosion isn't like a yeah. There's a lot ten of prior second thing. Happening. That's like a couple hour like setup. Well, I say the cops are about to head to the door and they got a tip. House blows. In up. twenty minutes, I can't blow up my fucking house. I'll tell you Dude, that. How about twenty minutes? I can't blow up your apartment. Bro, they had it. So I don't know what the fuck you're talking Literally about. Literally, it was prepped. What? At any point in time, they press a button and no. blows up the whole fucking house. Not maybe not a button, but maybe like. They have like a wire that they have a minute to get out of the house. They hook the wire, they dip. Okay, I don't know. And a minute I don't later, know house goes boom. Who the fuck you think Peter, these guys were? How, but that's crazy. I don't know, how do you look like a nice house, Peter? It has, has to be an agent. At least a middle has, class. Yeah, I'm with Garrett on this. Has it makes more sense. Agent. What do you mean? Of has a three-letter yeah. agency. Yeah. To do something that premeditated, you have to have intel, and the only people that yeah. have that amount of intel is an agent. Federal. You think, you think it was deeper? Bureau yeah, I think agents. it was deeper. I think faux shizzle deeper. And maybe there were some files in there that would. Oh my goodness. That would that make would some shit go crazy. All of us know uh, something. Al is telling us that it was probably a meth lab. How about I think that's probably more accurate? <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah, probably. A, some Walter White situation. It yeah. was a federal government funded <laughs> meth lab <laughs> in Virginia. Terry's trying to pull it together. <laughs> yeah, he's really trying to fucking grasp it. Oh my goodness gracious. You want to know something, an interesting fact about the FBI? Yeah. They actually hire people that have high anxiety and are. are um, What's the word? Not anxiety, but um, they're... What is it when you're always like looking for something wrong? Like something like... OCD. You're paranoid. paranoid. People, they hire people with paranoia. Really? Because they're more susceptible to like catch things. And what they do is... Um, they, they, they give you a test and they don't tell you they're hiring you based on paranoia, but they, they're like, answer they're it looking honestly. For it. They're looking for it. They see that you're slightly over paranoid and then they teach you to, to... They train you to control it. Wow. To control this paranoia, to look for it for them hmm. and find things That's that other so people cool. wouldn't find. How interesting is that one? That's pretty sick. And I was sick. like, I'm paranoid as fuck, dude. I'd be a sick FBI agent. <laughs> I'm sure they're trying I'm to recruit so you after that. Paranoid. Imagine, like, they're, they're, apparently, there's a second sense you have as someone that's paranoid to like always be looking for something that gives you a, a second sense, which is very it's pretty interesting. sick. Very interesting information. It's pretty cool. I wonder if, so say you're a federal agent of the FBI. Um, I wonder if your kids know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you could tell people right. you're an FBI. Unless agent. you're working for yeah. like some crazy. No, they got a, they got a badge just like everybody FBI. Yeah. Like, the kids do. No, <laughs> no. <okay. laughs> I'm just kidding. No. Kids do really. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's. But you know, but the FBI agents they're the most legit fucking people. Like they're they're so legit because you can't they can't have any ulterior motives because before you even get into the bureau you need um to take a polygraph test. So like they oh really to, so they ask you like do you ever plan on going fucking rogue like if, do you think you'd be susceptible if someone like bribed you so they're the most straight arrow fucking people yeah because I probably if, feel if, that. You, if you yeah they'd be like so over ten million are you gonna fucking join this terrorist agency no <laughs> <laughs> like yeah you're not uh, you're not getting hired so like they are the most like straight wow. arrow, arrow people and that's why when you think of the most secretive government things you think of FBI because these are people that are going to restrict these secrets and yeah. and, and, and fucking yeah, 100%. Government. And that's why they take these things so so fucking seriously. Yeah. Right? Fuck, dude. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. God, would you even want that information? Like would you want to be the guy yes. that has all the deepest darkest secrets of the fucking government? I was actually thinking about that just as you were bringing it up. Yeah. 
Absolutely not. I yeah, know. I don't think so. Dude. Really? No, I, uh, you, nah, you couldn't handle it. You'd so go fuck. You'd go crazy. I would, yeah, you'd go crazy. <laughs> I would the never. Do what with our butts? <laughs> <laughs> go on. No, you're. <laughs> my my stepbrother is. Um, he's in a tier one military force, so that's like special operatives. Yeah. But he knows of people, and like I've known of many people that are even above that, like within Delta Force, which is like the most elite. They're probably equivalent to CIA. Mm. And the knowledge that they have of like what is happening happening globally and within our own government is so scary because you're hearing about these things that like the elites are doing with whatever it may be, trafficking, which is a hundred huge. billion dollar industry. Yeah, huge. Drugs, narcotics, all of this. And it's like some of the most well known, famous people that we all aspire to be or look up to are involved in this. And it's like with that information, you feel like you'd want to make a difference, but how and can you? Really, no. Probably not, yeah. And I would not want to have that direct information because I would feel the need to do something that would probably get me, killed. one, killed, or two, my family in danger. And yeah. there's no but that, way. But, that, but, that, but that's that also where it's like, people try saying, like, there's no way you could keep secrets like this. Oh, yes, you can. Yeah, you can. Oh, yes, you can. Yeah. When, when you're being yes. threatened by the most powerful people in the world that they're, they'll literally kill your entire family, you're not telling a soul. You're not telling nobody. And apparently a lot of this information, you wouldn't even want to tell your family. Yeah. That's the issue. Exactly. You wouldn't even want your kids knowing what's going on because it's so... It's probably so death. catastrophic that it's like, I know I would immediately put my family in danger by yeah. them knowing that I just, I will, I will not even oh step gosh. back around. Oh my. You're, well, we were just talking about that with the aliens, that apparently the reason that you know, every president gets this information about the aliens is because the information about it is so terrifying to humanity that you don't even want to tell people because it's like, yeah. this would just ruin everything. Like, this would literally make everybody go into absolute chaos. You, yeah, I feel like you just have to have such a higher, like, sense of awareness to be able to even grasp an ounce of that information. Do you think we'll ever have full disclosure on anything? Do you think we get to a point where... They tell us everything because it's too far gone. I think no. I think that the only thing that will tell us everything is our own our own demise, like our own death. I think death is the answer to, you know, the, the ultimate and like the ultimate answer to what all this is going to be. Do you think we get an answer? That's my biggest excitement. Is that I, I used to fear death, right? I don't. I don't anymore for the main reason, especially when I was an atheist, which I'm not anymore. But when I was, it was like you can't fear the unknown. Because we don't know. Right. Like, I live by that. You cannot fear something you don't know, whether it's the answer of what's going to happen with something, anything. We don't understand death. We don't know what happens. Therefore, why fear? You can't fear the unknown. However, now I kind of almost get excited because I think that maybe on the edge of that, that wisp, that death, not that I'm excited to die, but on the hopeful terms that one day you get the answers to everything. And I think that's just exciting. Yeah. In a weird I, way. I, I think that that's beautifully said. Um, if I think if we had the answers here... We would be miserably, you know, unimpressed mm -hmm. with everything that's happening. Like, life in general would just be very mundane, you know, much more mundane than it can be, I guess. So, yeah. yeah you have anything to add to that? Not really, man. Actually, yeah. I do want to talk about something on that topic, though, because I used to believe it for a while. What? Reincarnation. Ooh. What do you guys think about it? So it's funny because obviously I've been, I've been kind of like open about the fact that I've kind of come back to Christianity, right? Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is coming back to Christ's teachings. Yeah. The fact, just turning the other cheek, being a good person. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing those few points and abiding by them, right? But when it comes to reincarnation, I've decided if, if, if we are souls in this body, right? Mm -hmm. if, if, if we're so powerful in these higher beings that are able to shoot our souls down into human form, yeah. why wouldn't that be possible in other areas? Exactly. That's, that's the only reason because I was talking, I, was, I, I said on the last podcast, yeah. I was having a debate with my friend who was a Muslim talking about these things. He's like, well, do you also believe in re reincarnation? I was like, honestly, maybe. And he's like, you're not a Christian. You don't believe in anything. I was like, well, wait a second. Yeah. Just because it's not in the Bible and all this stuff. If, if you really think about it deep, if we believe in this thing that we are souls and we transfer to these bodies, who's to say we can't go do it in other universes and yeah. other areas? I think it's definitely a possibility just because of that. Right? If you do yes. Yes. see having a soul as a possible thing. I, I have this, I have a view very similar to that. Like, I'm not going to say that I don't believe in reincarnation. Mm -hmm. I think that reincarnation is just as possible as all of the other 3,000 yeah, religions. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. God, and you have, yeah. I think that it's every, every religion 
at least the ones that aren't extreme and like justify the murdering of children. You know what I mean? Yeah. But almost every idea of this um, salvation, you know, is beautifully well written and it's beautifully well scripted or, or rather, yeah, scripture. It's beautiful, but I just think that this this level of existence and beyond that, the tran- the transcending portion of of life is so much more profound that I think all of it and none of it is easily possible. And I like to think of it like that. I yeah. think that none of it's possible. And I think that all of it is. Can, like, can, I I tell you, can I tell you a crazy theory yeah. that I came up with by myself recently that I haven't heard anyone really say? Um, obviously, there's heaven, there's hell in the okay. Bible. But what else yep. is there? What else is there? There's the middle purgatory. Of which is purgatory. purgatory. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I thought about this, and this made me go a little crazy. I just said, all right, if there's heaven, there's hell, and there's purgatory, aren't we in purgatory? Think about it. If there was a purgatory, because purgatory is what? It's, it's, the, it's, it's people that haven't gone to hell, but they haven't gone to heaven, but it's their final test. Mm-hmm. How would you final test a soul? You would strip them of all ego, all information, and put them somewhere mm. where they have to choose good. Would you choose good forgetting that you're a soul, forgetting that you're supposed to be a good person and this is a test? That's what, I, otherwise, what would purgatory be? How is, how? Oh, shit. Think about it. I think we're in purgatory. Oh, shit. I think everybody yeah. on earth is in Maybe. purgatory, it's and that's very... what the test is. Otherwise, what the fuck is purgatory? If, yeah. we, if, we, if we fail this test, and it's like, all right, now time for your soul to be tested Yeah, why would we go to a, from a test to a test? Why would we go from test? a test to a test? Yeah. A, B, how would you retest us if we already know the answer? It's like, oh, be a good person now. All right, you just be a good person. No, yeah, the test the would be you forgetting. So I think that the souls here may, this may be a form of purgatory. Or that's and that a... crazy concept came to me, and I was like, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or purgatory is reincarnation. <laughs> you get sent back, motherfucker. <laughs> well, well, which is what we're doing then. It, it, they can get the same thing. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you, do you uh, entertain that? Do you think we're probably souls and that we're probably here on a weird experience and we chose to forget everything? I absolutely and utterly think that this was a choice. Um, not a choice from... From any of us by name, like mm-hmm. Garrett, not Garrett's choice. Garrett's a vessel, you know what yeah. I mean, yeah. like a, a, a physical container. Um, I feel like this is just a, an energy, like an, an endless form of energy that is synonymous between all of us and everything. Do, do you right? think? Do you think that if you had to side with one, would you go with God, supernatural, or would you side with science almost? Or do you think that it's good to have like kind of a middle ground? I think you absolutely need to make them cohesive and pair them together. Exactly. I think that you yeah. need. Yeah. I think that you need some type of religious format, just as much as you do you need to look at like the empirical evidence, scientific evidence of things. Because um, if you neglect one, yeah, you're 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 losing such a huge part of existence. Mm-hmm. But do you know what's crazy? Science is allowed one, like magical moment. One big mystery that is supernatural right that there's there doesn't have to be an explanation for it and that is the big bang the idea right. that yeah. everything came from nothing and just an explosion started the universe that to me is like you're kind of admitting we don't know how this all started <laughs> a snap of a finger boom big bang hmm so like science is, is, is yeah. the, they have they have that one thing where it's like yep everything just blew up where did that what was that explosion? What start? Something had to start that explosion. Something just can't come from nothing. But if we want to entertain this idea that this is maybe a reincarnated human experience that we're having, then all of this is an illusion. All of the science oh, yeah. that every human has ever come up with is an illusion. Yeah. And it's. I don't think any of this is real. Personally, it's, it's almost a a blissful form of just like this human experience is just a snap. For this energy to, you know, push through this almost like it's almost like we're going through a like a wormhole or a black hole right yeah. now, and yeah. we're we're going to enter back into this energy, and it's gonna suck us back into another reincarnated version of all well, this. And I think it's it's part of the evolution of existence. Like to evolve, to grow, you need to go through these physical, tangible yeah. experiences of suffering and pain, and you learn from it. Well, I think. I think that if we, if there is a heaven, I think we're probably there right now, and that this is a sim, like some sort of a simulation where yeah. we're in heaven and we're being projected down here mentally. 
mentally we're in these bodies, but mm. if there is a heaven, your your real body, just like if you had goggles on and you think you're in the game, yeah. your real body is still in heaven. You're still in spirit in heaven. Yeah. You never left. You only go back when you die. And it, it, it when, when you die, you have this near-death experience, you go through this tunnel and you go back. Apparently, right? Again, and this is just all theoretical, right? right? But wait, but there's the theory now, when it comes back to the aliens, right, that the creepy part is that they say you're not supposed to go to the light when you die, right? They say because well, they say that it's a, tr- it's a trick, and yeah. this is what's fucking me up. Because if I die and I see the light, I'm gonna be like, dude, this guy on TikTok said don't go to the light. This is fucked up, right? So they are saying that the, the light is a trick, and they they put it through movies and media to say that the, the light is heaven. But mm-hmm. what the light is is it's it's a way to reincarnate you back and keep your soul trapped on Earth, and that it's a thing that the aliens yeah. are doing to trick us to stay here. But if you turn around, apparently there's another way to go that, that makes you leave this reincarnation cycle. And now I'm going to see the light and be like, is that heaven? <laughs> <laughs> or is that a trick? And I've been, have I been coming back to Earth a million fucking times? <laughs> and that fucks me up. So I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? Well, what do I do? Yeah. Do I go to heaven? Or am, am I going to get, now am I going to get tricked and be a ghost walking around on Earth like this motherfucker <laughs> told me not to go towards light and now I haven't seen the light in a billion years? <laughs> Tom fucked up about this. Let me tell you. <laughs> but won't it won't it be inevitable that at one point, if you keep going to the light, the so called light, yeah. and you're having these ex- experiences of life and these little snaps of physical, tangible, material things, mm-hmm. it's inevitable that at some point that energy is going to walk the other direction. Got to turn around. At some it's point. going to go to this 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 ultimate level, just an ev- like an evolving formation of energy mm-hmm. and. I wouldn't even worry about it. Well, you know why? I wouldn't even worry about anything. It's, it's going to happen. You know why that's hard? <laughs> because of media. Like he said, where everything's go to the light, go, go to the light. Go to the light. You when die, you go die, go you're going to be light. like, holy shit, the light. And you got to remember, every, every, every time you die, you forget now. So you forget, and then you oh, forget fuck, again. I should have turned around. So now you're a new person. You die again. You're like, the light. Yeah. And then you wake up, you son of a bitch. And, and then you're done. Thing. But here's the thing. So, so another thing, when I, when I see these stories and people that, talk about these spiritual things that we, we chose to reincarnate here. And I see comments of people being like, I wouldn't have chosen here. This is horrible. I can't wait to die and get out of here. And I'm like, how about you're the person that's going to get reincarnated? Because yeah. you didn't figure it out. If yeah. you can't find peace on earth, that, that's the test. And they don't exactly. realize they're missing it. And they're like, they're like, this is miserable. I don't even want to be here. I don't, I'm never coming back. It's like, it's like mm. the, back. I think the whole point is that you can find heaven on earth. And I think that's the goal. Yeah. Right? I, and if you're admitting that it's miserable, I think you're also admitting that you failed the test almost. And I think that you're miss, if you do believe in this stuff and you're like, yeah, I'm never coming back, it's over, you're going to go out and be like, got to come back and redo it. Because I think, I, I think this is a test. And there's a beautiful quote that I came up with myself recently that it's like, why, why should, and I said this on the podcast mm-hmm. a while back, and it's like why you shouldn't be upset at someone that has these horrific evil beliefs or just like ignorant beliefs, somebody's racist, mean, anything. And the reason is that I think one day all will know. I think that it's the same way you're taking a test as a kid and you studied, you're, you're acing it, and the kid goes, no, those answers are wrong, bro. Are you going to be like, no, they're right, and you should know. No, you're going to go, dude, we're going to get the answers back. Yeah. Right? And I think that goes the same with life. If, if we're right about all the spiritual shit, I think that one day we're going to die and you'd be like, I tried to guide you, but, you know, I was right. And I think, again, one day everybody will know that the answer was love. It's crazy. And good you, morality. You came up with that yourself. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Um, I wouldn't life. say myself. Uh, <laughs> I would say with well, the help now of, that you're bringing that up. I would, say, I would say with the help of spiritual inducing items that you can ingest. <laughs> but you also, despite that, despite that. No, of course it was my your own brain human that came up. vessel yeah. came up yeah. with this feeling, and it's like something that I've I've been and that kind of gave me an answer to something that I've been thinking about is um, a couple years back. There was this person when I first started this journey of social media and stuff, mm-hmm. and I was just shy of a, a suitable following for people to, you know, not think that you're, you're cringe or not try to give you any backlash. So I was still getting backlash is what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. And I had these guys from my hometown come up to me and start, uh, you know, just using some like vulgar language. They were drunk and like, dude, what are you doing? You're such a this and that. Yep. I got not to. I... All like in my first response would have been like aggression. My ego would have said aggression. Like I need to defend this person. Mm -hmm. But like for whatever reason, I just said this too shall pass. Don't know why. Everything, dude. That's everything. But it was like 
that clicked. And I mm-hmm. looked at those guys and I said, this too shall pass. For yep. you, I said, everything that you're experiencing mm-hmm. right now to cause you to say what you're saying to me, this too shall pass. Everything that I'm taking in from what you're saying, this too shall pass. And what to kind of resurface what you said, it's all, the answer is going to be there. Mm-hmm. And I think to find that answer appropriately is to just, you know, find this heaven on earth. Be a kind person. You know, there's going to be evil in this world. Does not mean that you have to associate yourself with it. Doesn't mean that you have to go out and fight the world of demons. You just have to sit within your own human vessel and, and find that heaven on earth for, for whatever, you know, purpose that is for you. Um, I, I get worried. I feel like a lot of people are very lost. I feel Absolutely. like yeah, a 100%. lot, Absolutely. like more than you think. Like there are, I've had conversations with, with even streamers who, who have like a very deep community of people that watch them. They're like, dude, I know like a lot of my fans are just kids that are stuck in their house and they don't go outside. They don't have an outside life. And a lot of these people, like obviously some of them stay good people, but some of them build up so much resentment for the outside world. Mm -hmm. which has happened a lot, especially with with COVID, right? A lot of people got stuck inside, and a lot of them, you'd be surprised, never came back out. Because even me, who's a very outgoing person, you put the mask on, you got used to not having to look people in the face. Like, a lot of us were very socially fucked up after that time. Yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? So I can't imagine someone who's a little, was already a little bit socially unavailable, they never come back out. And a lot of these people, especially like the anti-maskers, are like, fuck the people with masks. You'd be surprised. A lot of people that are still wearing masks are because they're scared to socially like show facial expressions still. Like some of them aren't even because of COVID, I think. I think a lot of people are genuinely can't bring, come back to that social level that they were once on before. Yeah, COVID changed everybody. Even with my my DJ company. Fucked up, dude. We, I used to dance literally every weekend, maybe sometimes twice a week. I text my boss. He's like, yo, we're getting like one dancing party a month. Well, we're so, like, they don't even want dancers dancing at their party because yeah. they don't want to dance with a so, random wow. person. G- G- it's Gianna. like, it's like, I used to be the life of the party. Before COVID, everyone wanted a dancer, especially like if you were like a well, hot let's ex- kid. Let's explain for the people. Oh, home. okay. So yeah, that's, that's only a New York thing. Okay. So in New York, we have Sweet 16s. Apparently big, that's a New York thing. And uh, New Jersey some people thing. don't have Sweet 16s, but yeah. So Sweet 16 is a girl's 16th birthday. It's yeah. really big. Throw a big party. You, you have a production company come and a lot of production companies... You have dancers that you yes. hire. Gianni and I, when we were younger, were both dancers for these Sweet Sixteen. Yes, and we were almost like celebrities before we were celebrities. Like literally, like that's what being a dancer like everyone was. Everyone wanted girls to dance with were us. Were obsessed with you. It was it was the most fun job to have as a teenager. It was amazing. You're partying yeah. with girls that are your age. It was such a good time. It was amazing. He, after, Gianni, was still a dancer after COVID, and after COVID ended, nobody wanted a dancer at their Sweet Sixteen anymore. And when they did, they wouldn't interact with you. Yeah, because you were a stranger. We used to. It, everything changed. How about I had to like? There was obviously there's circles in the dance. You know, everyone's dancing. There's a circle, and I tried to get into the circle, and the girls like nudged me, and I was like, I was like I'm working. This is my and job. They, Part of like this is my job. I'm trying to <laughs> yeah. dance with you. Yeah. And you know what they did? They didn't say a word to me. They went. Oh my god. And they looked. For, I went. I went back <laughs> to my boss. I was like. I, they don't want me here. He goes, yeah, I saw that. You should probably just hang back here. I was like, I was like, am I still getting paid? He goes, yeah, I got you. I was like, okay. I was was like, and, and that's happened multiple times ever since like after COVID where they don't want to be near you. And I'm like, listen, by my boss, I need to spin the sweet 16 girl at least three times. So you're going (laughs) to fucking let me in that fucking circle. And I'm spinning that girl on her birthday. But yeah, that's that's, Well, now do you think that that since COVID like made people reject, um, you know, like a service that you were doing. Do you yeah. think that that caused you to be lost for a while? Because like you were, you said the life of a party. Yeah. You literally oh, electrified yeah. people. Yo, I used to feel weird nowhere. as fuck because after COVID, like no one danced with you unless you got like every once in a while, you'd get like a really good crowd and mm-hmm. I'd walk out of there feeling fucking amazing. I'd yeah. be like, you know what? That was fun as shit. Yeah. But the other parties, you just like, you almost walk away feeling sad. You're like, yo, is this where society's going? Like, that's what I would say walking out of these parties where I'm sitting in the corner by myself dancing. My boss is like, yo, just stand in front of the DJ booth and dance. I was like, you really don't want me interacting? He goes, they won't interact with you, I swear. I was like, where do you think I was like, okay, hey, why are they paying me then? <laughs> what else, like, what else do you think's affected that we didn't even notice yet? You know what I mean? You, I, you know what I've been seeing in the kids a lot? Be lockdown, you, know no, what I mean? you know what I've been seeing in the kids a lot, which it's Angelina does it, our younger sister, and I yell at her. All the fucking the time for this. In? Every kid. Ooh, yep, and even, even my friend's little brother does it. All day, they, they will live. sit with their AirPods in their head. They're that so we have known fact 
that there is um, radiation, radiation going to cancer. your brain, mm. you will get brain cancer with enough of it. Bro, you but will. these kids and these kids live, are literally living. Live. We're the sitting AirPods. there. We're sitting there eating dinner. AirPods in. My sister has her AirPods in. I'm, I'm like, yo, what do you and, need your fucking AirPods dinner. in? Well, at dinner. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, oh, well, like, I'm playing music. I was like, you're playing music? We're at fucking dinner. What do you mean? What do you wow. mean? Here's my theory where all this goes. And this is the scary part. I'm going to go fucking super, super future, horrible, whatever. Anyways. <laughs> so my thing go is this. It. What people don't realize is we are already robots. The whole thing is that we are yeah. going to be con like connected. They're talking about the chip in your brain. We're going to be connected. What people don't realize is that this is... Um, an expansion of you, this phone. Think about it. Like when you don't have this phone, you have people have had cases where they feel like they have missing limb syndrome. Like where's my phone? Think about it. Like it's it's not just yeah, an addiction. Yeah. No, this I... is this is a piece of you. Yeah. If you lost your phone, most of us in this day and age, a piece of you is gone. If you didn't have it back, a piece of you is literally gone. So now what I think with the headphones is it's the next way that they've found that they are fully connected into with this with this phone that they they only hear their notifications. Therefore, they hear everything. They're connected. There's no nothing outside they can get in. And I think they're starting to realize that. And my worry is this now with AI coming into play is they're going to start connecting that and we're going to be, see how like you ask AI a question and it knows the answer. That's what this chip is going to do. Mm -hmm. Someone's going to ask you a question. Instantly, you're going to know the answer. It's going to change how everything works. How is a kid supposed to take a test? It's going to be, yeah. we're going to be so on far beyond that. And I think that we've only been here to develop the seed into creating these human AI fucking hybrids. And I think that's where this, as crazy as that sounds, I think that's where we're fucking headed. Yeah. It 100%. really looks like it. And look at the new Google things. We just talked about that last podcast. You're People walking walk around. around with, this TV's right in front of us. You guys can't see it. There's a TV right here. If you have the Google goggles on, you could put a fucking TV wherever you want. Literally. Literally. I saw a guy walking through it where he was like, he put a screen on his fridge in real life with the goggles on so that he had his shopping list on there at all times. He has a fucking TV. He put a TV screen over his real TV in the Google goggles so that he could watch TV on there. And but it's like, what it, the it, fuck? It comes back to this. Do we ever stop? Because as humans, we see constant advancement. There's never been a time where a phone company's been like, yeah, we figured it out. <laughs> like, that doesn't happen. Yeah, they're never so, going to stop. So, what, so my thing is there has to be a reason. And I don't think it's just human reward system. We're obsessed Constantly better. Everyone wants better things. Everyone wants to do yeah. No one, you're never content. What is that leading towards? What I think, I think that we are supposed to give birth to AI. And I think it's right on the edge here. And now what happens when the next stage of evolution isn't just human advancement me mentally, but it's creating this extremely intelligent fucking entity that can do everything for you. And then it's like, what happens when that thing's so intelligent where now it realizes that you're redundant? Why do we need humans? We literally could think of how to build a spaceship and go to Mars now. Done. Where, and then they're like, you guys just fucking, they're the new thing. Yeah, yeah, once, that becomes, once that becomes sentient, we're fucked. Yeah, we're fucked. Once they realize this, and we're fucked. Can, done. Done. And that's Honestly, why Elon Musk has, has said, like, I told everyone to be careful. You know why? But who he's cares? Also, he's also putting chips in people. You know why? Who cares? We'll be dead by then. Who gives a shit? Well, that, we'll but, be dead. But, 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 we'll be dead. That's why. That's their problem. That's why he wants to become it interplanetary because he said this there's two things that will happen mm -hmm. a catastrophic event will happen which we spoke, spoke about in the last podcast yeah. apparently there are past civilizations that died from catastrophic events so a a catastrophic catastrophic event happens we all kill each other and war nuke or something natural happens and destroys everybody it's bound to happen or we get life on another planet and we continue it's it's the only two things that happen he said with that being said we, our massive goal is human civilization. He goes, I think there's a thing that happens where we get so advanced and then we all die or we get so advanced and we head to the cosmos and we expand and we become an interplanetary thing. And he says he thinks that's the next stage of advancement. That's fucking crazy. And that's why AI has to happen. Is that why he's going to Mars? Yes, is that why he wants why to go to Mars? to Mars? Holy he's saying shit. Either, he's, he's saying, guys. Holy shit. Even if we don't I didn't know that. It, he's, it's so fucking intense. That's he fucking says, crazy. The human race dies and it restarts or it doesn't and Earth dies or we go to the cosmos and we keep this thing going. Yeah, honestly, it'll How never, it'll never work. How fucking crazy is that? It'll never work because humans are fucking stupid and we all just kill each other. It'll never work. Or we get there. Or, we get, <sighs> or, or AI figures it out for us and goes, here's how we solve world hunger. Here's war. And we go, oh, maybe AI. But you know, you know why that wouldn't happen? Because the elites would never let that happen. We need world hunger. We need that shit. Well, we don't. They, they need do. it.
they needed to stay rich, to stay powerful. Guess what? If there's no homeless people, they don't have well, power. You know what I mean? Like if, if there's no lower class, they don't have power. Well, they exactly, need, but that's they need why lower, middle, higher class. It's, they very need that scary, stuff. it's very scary lately how, especially with COVID, it, it, I don't want to say it all seems planned. I don't want to sound like one of those kooks, but it's very scary how you watch to destroy the middle class. Destroyed. You watch businesses, small businesses, which is what, like, that's the forefront of this country. Like, if the middle class does well, consumers are out buying, everybody does well. Mm -hmm. If the middle class does shit, we're fucked. And you watch the middle class get absolutely destroyed. You watch a bunch of people who were sent checks. I knew people that should have never been sent checks during COVID. Yeah. They should have never been sent all that Ooh. money. But I knew business owners that went out of business that should have been sent that money. And they did it. And it's like, well, why are we trying to destroy this middle class system? I think that they want us to be dependent. I think that they want to get to a place where it's like they start sending everybody checks and we go, ah, I mean, this is enough. And then we're just dependent yeah. on the elites, on the, on the higher ups. And, and they just give us entertainment and they drug us. And we just think like, oh, like this is life. Right. And that's the scary thing to me. But I think, I think a lot of people are starting to wake up and even yeah. talking about it, like on this podcast, I think it's, I don't want to say it's dangerous because I haven't said a lot, but a lot of people are waking up and I will say that. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because if you talk about this stuff, a lot of people still call you crazy and it's like, you haven't opened your eyes yet. But I think go, things go a lot deeper that if you knew, you'd go a little crazy. That's all yeah, I have to say. Yeah, 100%. I think if we knew everything, I think if we knew everything, I think the world would go into a total, total panic. I We'd think, all just start the fucking stuff, The stuff nuts. that we already know. Yeah. The stuff that we already know that's declassified is like, they were doing what? Yeah, look at the MK Ultra project that we talked about last week. MK Ultra that they were they were gonna the, the government was gonna fake um, that the Cubans were attacking us back in what the sixties. They're gonna fake that. Oh my gosh! What, what is the fuck? It? There's another conspiracy theory that's not a conspiracy anymore because it was declassified. Um, but the president at the time, I think it was uh, JFK. I think he vetoed it and was like, "This is not happening." But it was basically the idea that um, we were gonna fake a terrorist attack from Cuba so we can go in there and take over. And it's it's proven. Like the go the government. Uh, uh, showed this to the president was like we're gonna do this and he what? said he said no we're not and you can call me crazy but these are the things that you learn that are declassified what the no fuck? no it's real and and it's like how about if that wasn't vetoed and it went through what to happened this, to this day we would think cuba attacked us yeah so now who knows what other shit went through yeah that and we, we just think fucking idea that's where i'm like dude what like and people don't know about that yeah that's cr I, didn't, I didn't know about that no, i'm but into but this shit you could look it up it's a legitimate fact what so so that's when, when you crazy. see things like that you go a little crazy. And yeah. I don't want to be... And, and when, when I show people stuff like that, it's like, stop calling me crazy. Because now <laughs> what the fuck don't we know? <laughs> did, you, did you hear the weird conspiracy about the Denver airport? No, tell me. Did you hear about that? Maybe, if, if you... Okay, about so now let me ask you this. What's in Denver? Not much. Uh -huh. It's a large city. You don't need a fucking massive airport, do you? Bigger than LaGuardia in New York fucking city? In Denver? Denver. Denver's pretty big, no? Not bigger than New York City, I'll Anyways. tell you that much. Oh, I think I've heard this. Is it like some underground tunnels or some shit? Yeah, so I here's don't. the thing, right? It's always underground. First of all, if you look from the top down, it looks like a, like a Nazi swastika, the roads. Oh, God. First of all, uh, why the fuck are you building it like that? Change the fuck, change one of the roads. Just change one of them, I'm right? Look it up. Yeah. I got to see if it's like close and people are like... <laughs> no, no, no. It's, 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 it's a full-on swastika. Let's see. Go on. Um, there's a giant blue horse with crazy veins... A crazy statue. It's like 40 feet tall. And it has a red... It's a blue horse with a red eye. Which everyone's like, okay, that's fucking weird. That looks pretty demonic. The guy who made it, lightning struck the horse. Oh, wait, what the killed, fuck? Yeah, it's a literal look swastika. At this, look at this. No, look at that. Yeah, yeah, that's, a, that's another thing that I'm going to get into. What the hell is that? Yeah, exactly. It's fucking weird. It's weird. Yeah, the painting's in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to get into that. Dude, fucking look at, weird. Look at the painting in there. Yeah, that's creepy. The so... Now, mind you, those paintings weren't just put in there. Very there's a whole, Who there's a whole, there? There, so here's the this thing. Weird, there's man. a whole committee that needs to approve of the paintings. And that's why they're like, why are they, there's why like, they there's like Jesus like stomping on kids, like children burning on fire. They're like, why are they putting these paintings in this fucking thing? Even weirder, they built the airport. They said, oh, this isn't structurally sound. They put it underground and built a new airport above it. And now there's tunnels underground. They said, we're using it for storage. Dude, these paintings are What the weird, fuck? Bro. And the horse killed the guy that made it, and they had to pay another guy to go fix it. Dude, because like lightning struck the horse, and like the head fell off and killed the guy. It sounds like they're making it out to seem like 
Just a bunch of unnecessary a bunch architectural of weird additions, but uh, no. If you're gonna have an entire another airport well, underneath, exactly. So here's the theory. The theory is that that's the new world order, and that something's about to go down. We're all gonna fucking kill each other. There's gonna be a massive like nuke attack or something, bro. Why the fuck do you need a massive airport in Denver? Except no, you don't. With bunkers underneath, bro. You don't need that. Oh. That took multiple years to make. Uh. Yeah, weird, bro. I don't think so. They say that no. they do. They do massive There's like. Because there's weird areas that, like, you can't walk through in the airport and shit that people say. And it's like, what's in there? And there's people that have, like, I mean, obviously, you're not supposed to go Wait, sneaking around in the fucking airport. Should we make a YouTube video and go We're there? going in the tunnels of the Denver airport. Should we go to the Denver airport and investigate? No, I'm all about Did you action. Wait, wait. Did you look I, up I, all I the paintings? Yes there's a painting of Jesus, like, over a bunch of people. And there's, like, there's like, but, and, like little, burning bro, stuff, there's, like, right? like, houses on fire with kids running out of it. It's like, wh who the yeah. fuck is approving of these paintings? Every everything in there is super demonic, and there's a reason for that. And everyone's saying that the new world order is super demonic, just like everything in LA is. So everyone's saying that some shit's gonna go down. They're all gonna be hiding under there. They're gonna fucking rise, and we're all fucked. Dude, I've that's heard, the theory. There's so many conspiracy theories that if you dive into it about like the end of the world, you, you just go, all right. Well, I guess I'm done paying taxes. Wait, did you look up? Like, did did you look stop up? Stop doing everything. I guess did, like did, the fuck something about to happen soon, bro. <laughs> did you look up the? <laughs> I'm just gonna. You the know road? what the fucked up part is? Like when you speak to like normal people that aren't crazy like us, you know what they say? They go, listen. Every generation thinks they're the generation that the world's gonna end, <laughs> which is true. Yeah. yeah. Every generation's right. like so it's very the end is near. So like I get it. Did you see the bird's but, eye view? But you know what's weird about the the Bible? The Bible says in the end of times the Euphrates River will dry up. At the time, yes, yeah, so at the time, there was no way of knowing. The Euphrates River was abundant. It was, it was a river. The Euphrates River is literally dropping up, uh, drying up. You're telling me 2,000 years ago, people were able to predict that this river was going to dry up? That, to me, is crazy, and it's almost dry. So yeah. if they were correct, if the Bible's true, mm, it seems like the end of times are coming. They're I want Jesus, Jesus to come back and start <laughs> killing these demons. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm ready to go. All I, all I want to say, and mainly for... For both of you and your your fan base is that with everything going on with with being somebody that might be lost in all of this chaos of a world that we're in i think the most important thing for you to do is to stand like 10 toes deep within within you you have to immerse yourself with your own fears and you have to stand up for what you believe i don't care what it is you have to stand up for something that is what will combat any evil in this world just have, yeah, you have to carve a purpose into your life, um, and yeah, <laughs> couldn't have said it any better. Do you think the world's gonna end soon, Garrett? <laughs> I think that it it has ended several, several times, and it will happen several, several more times. I just think what you were saying earlier. This is all a very scripted, carved test. We are here for an indefinite pers like purpose to to discover what, what true love and kindness can be for, for others. Um, and, and in the face of evil, present yourself as that loving kindness. You know what I mean? Because um, I think the, the whole thing of evil is to tempt you into these things, to yeah. tempt yeah. you into these, like, these almost masked situations. Have you ever, have you ever smelt a fart? <laughs> have I ever smelt a fart? Have you ever sniffed a fart? Sexually. <laughs> so many. <laughs> No, you haven't. Shut up. So farts? Are you a smart a fart sniffer? Not. I'm not like, like looking all around. <laughs> yeah, listen, if you sniff the fart, you are like, okay. But, so then what the fuck happened, Garrett, when you sniff the farts? Because I've never sniffed a fart. And I'm curious. Okay, I actually have sniffed some farts. <laughs> like quite <laughs> a know. handful. Dude, what have you not done? Wait, oh my God, I actually had. Wait, no, I need to hear. I have a, oh, yeah, yeah, go, go, yeah, go. Tell me, what, like, how do you even, like, how does that happen? How do you what like, started? How do you tell a girl to toot in your face, or do you know, like see it coming? Does it just laugh? happen? No, no, no. All right. You're like sitting there, like. I originally <laughs> did it because I, I'm I'm very comfortable with my farts. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just I'll let them ricochet off of chairs and walls and. Uh, what I do you mean by ricochet? Are you blowing shits out of your ass that bounce? Listen, you can lift a cheek and ricochet off wood, particular cedar <laughs> red wood. Bro, what if the you fuck ricochet you a fart, about? a flatulence off cedar red wood like chairs. It's it's through the roof. Yeah. Anyways, gotta buy one. All I'm not sure if you agree with this, but mm -hmm. most girls in the world, in relationships particularly, are insecure about farting in front of you. 100. percent Yeah. They don't like it. I like comfort. I like to have comfort with my partner, and I don't want anything to be hidden, especially your farts. I want to hear them. Yeah. I want to be around when you're doing it, and I want you to just let them out. So if a girl wouldn't fart in front of you, would you feel disrespected? 
almost. I would feel sense. left out. Yeah. And this is why I started yeah. sniffing them. Because <laughs> this is why I started sniffing. If I'm able to put my nose between two cheeks and take in a fart, that shows them yeah. that I'm very comfortable with you. Yeah. I will go to any extent to show you my comfort. Are you comfortable yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's I don't ridiculous. believe you. You don't believe me? I, I believe I him. think you like it. I might. <laughs> I oh, well. Well, no, that's another I, I think you like it. Sniff her I was about thoughts. to say, I'm pretty sure. You I'm, know how much I love you! <laughs> that's how I think you do it. I, I'm pretty certain I'm blocked from this individual. Oh, or else I would, I would call her and, and verify for you that this has Can happened. You? Can but we call her? Do you have a number? I have her oh. email. I have her email. <laughs> <laughs> go on, go on. No, dad I, I, need to, I need to respect her. her uh, Boundaries. Her decision to you know to, to live her life the way she needs to so no more sniffing her farts ah, what a shame it is a, a shame. shame they were good farts they're great farts yeah, i'm sure amazing what? farts i think something i realized about you i think you're very intense i think you like showing like you like you like once you're dating a girl i think you like to like how can i prove to her it's that obsession. no guy's yeah. ever been as obsessed with her and then you see her poop and you're like nobody else has grabbed that shit <laughs> Nobody else has done that. But and then you're like, I'm doing it. And you don't think. You just do it. That's what I think. I don't think you're like a weirdo who's like into like shit and stuff. Like I think you're just like off the cuff moment. That's why when we ask you like, are you into kinks? You don't, because you don't have kinks like that where you're like, I like shit, I like this. Like you don't. I think you're just an in the moment guy. You see something happening and you're like, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> That's my theory. Do you think I'm right about that? Yeah, I think you're right. Okay. It's, it's a very like impulsive trait, I yeah. guess, of mine. Yeah. That, and that explains why I don't necessarily have a kink, per se. Mm -hmm. I yeah. just, you just You'll do just stuff. fucking You'll just do, do it. it. Like, if it's there, you're doing it. But how can you say that that's the wrong thing for Garrett to do? When no, no, yeah, no, exactly. no. I'm Beautiful, not saying it is. I love it. Loving you. woman that you, you, you've created this like mm -hmm. intense bond with. Yeah. Why not go to those full extents of, of obsession? You know? Yeah. Whether that be... Sniffing some farts. Yeah. Grabbing some fecal matter. <laughs> some fecal getting matter. peed on. Having yeah. any type of intercourse when there's, when there's a period involved. Yeah. I, that's, I think that's a beautiful connected moment. I think moment. it's beautiful. Um, and putting it on like war paint. Yeah. Specifically to show them. You know what? Show them that you're, you're a Wait, part of this experience. But let me ask you a question. Why do you think, why do you think you need to show them by being the most outlandish thing they've ever done? Like, why do you think that's how you want to show them? I think there's there's a spiritual creature within Garrett that puts these things into motion. That says, you know what? As humans, we are born with these set societal traits to say, this is how you're supposed to be. This is how you're supposed to conduct yourself in relationships, this or that, whatever. Um, obviously, there's some concrete things that you should do in this world as a human. Yeah. As in... Be very kind, be open-minded, be accepting to, of others. But at the same time, it's like no one is ever going to tell me that I can't push the boundaries in a relationship and I can't yeah. push the boundaries in obsession. Yeah, sometimes that's probably gone too far for some people and they've become psychopathic killers. I would never go that far, but I'm going <laughs> to sniff some farts. I'm going to sniff some farts and unapologetically in, do so. In a relationship, do you think you're always looking – for that moment to be like, this is my chance to prove it. Do you I think that's why this think happens? It just happens to you know, or do you think it's like a uh, random moment? Or like, are you like consistently like you're out? You see a guy looking at her ass. You're like, you're like I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> Come back and like next thing. Like, do you think you're always looking for it, or do you think it's it is just like random sort of the moment? Kill like him. now I'm thinking about it. It goes it goes through waves. Because obs obsession obsession, if, as you've been calling it, is like you're obsessed. You're always looking for it. So that's my curiosity. Like when you're dating no. a girl, are you always looking for this moment to like prove this to her? That's a good point. So maybe it's not obsession. Yeah. It's more of like a hyper awareness of just constantly being prepared for, for a spontaneous moment. You Fair know what enough. I mean? It's not like I'm looking for that specific action to do. Yeah. But I, I, I can definitely always just kind of, kind of jump right into a moment like that, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I have a question. Now, I'm almost 100% sure yes. that you would do it. Okay. Now, when you have a wife, right, and you have a kid, a kid comes out. Yes. Yep. She doesn't want to eat the placenta. Yes. I'm eating that placenta, but go on. Would you eat the placenta? Yes. How about I want to? How about I said the same thing, and then someone said, did you see what it looks like? 
Yeah, but that's why you Have you seen what it looks like? You don't gotta look at it. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Doesn't give a fuck. I want it pee. Okay. Yeah, I, I want it raw. I want the placenta raw. I want it uncooked. I yearn for the placenta. Unsevered. <laughs> an uncooked, unsevered placenta from my wife down my esophagus is probably the pinnacle of the human experience for me. That would. <laughs> pinnacle. That would. Do you think you chew it a lot or do you think you'd like try to swallow it whole? Like, like a, kind of like a squid. Oh, God. How do fuck. You eat it? Oh, how fuck. do you eat a raw placenta? How does Garrett? Most people bring. How does Garrett? Yeah, how does Garrett eat a raw placenta? I think you. Imagine your future wife. You like you just, salt and pepper in it. Kid, your kid just came from this fucking placenta. How are you eating right. it? Right. <laughs> keep in mind. Keep in mind a placenta is. Oh, <laughs> I was losing his shit Somebody behind else camera. <laughs> So keep in mind, a placenta is very large. Huge. Yeah. So yeah. you're you're proving such a point to your wife at this point that it's like, I can't just kneezle my way on this. I'm going to shove it as deeply into my mouth until I start to, you know, lose breath because I can't. Then you'll start gnawing on it and, like, and, you know, tearing it into pieces. But you don't want it to, like, completely separate. You need to take this thing down whole. <laughs> so, Shut the fuck up. Maybe you can you can tease on it slightly until you can get pieces in maybe a side of your mouth and you have it hanging out. See, like I'm starting to salivate now as we say this because I'm so excited for this moment. Um, wait, what if, wait, 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 wait. What if she wanted to eat it? Would you be upset that you can't, or would you say, "Nah, I'm eating that placenta"? I'd say whoever gets to it first. Honey. <laughs> we'll see who gets to it first because I'm coming in hot on that. I want the placenta. <laughs> Wait, have you thought about this before, or is this too a cuff of the moment? This, no, nah, this seems like, you, like it's been premeditated. Thought? Yeah. I don't think it's There is a book. Fuck, there not. is a book by Charles Darwin where um, the placenta is eaten by somebody. And I was very young reading that. Uh, like, I didn't read the whole book. I only read this like... Just the placenta just part. Just the placenta part. So <laughs> I was, as like a 12, 13-year-old, you're like, okay. And then you look on Google. That's what the placenta is. And then you're like, interesting. I want it. <laughs> I what? think that I want to have that experience. You're crazy for that. But they do. We say it's crazy in this conformed society. See, of I think, well, yeah, yeah. My but issue thousands is of years ago, they were munching on that. I show. need that for war. <laughs> I need the energy because I'm going out to defend no, my yeah, wife probably immediately. Would. My yeah. child has just been born. I need placental fluids and just just that meaty part in my gullet so I can go fight war. In my gullet is hilarious. How much can you sell one of those for? Like, a placenta? Isn't like ten grand if you sell? Yeah, it? no, it's very expensive. Yeah, because like because yeah, there's a, it's very. Because how else you getting placentas other than pregnant women having babies? Right? Yeah, you'd have to go get. I a wouldn't. Baby. I wouldn't sell mine though. I my would. wife ain't selling it. I'm but here's the thing. I, I'm, 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 <laughs> mine ain't going fucking nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody taking my fucking placenta. They're, they're not even you can take my fucking placenta. I'll kill you. I'll fucking kill you. Take my fucking placenta. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um. But see, I want to eat the placenta too, but for different reasons. I, well, I, want, it, reasons. I want it for well, the health factor. Do you not know of the health benefits of eating no, the placenta? No, I, I actually do. Okay. I've, got, yeah, I've, no, I've read just, up on some of that. It's extremely healthy What's for you. What's in my asshole? Sorry. Yeah, the, 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 the properties Sorry, of the placenta are like um, almost, almost the same vibe I get from stem cell research. Like how it, like, yeah. Yeah. it rebuilds, it, it revigorates. Mm -hmm. um, so... For me, just based on the overall fact that it's extremely healthy, I would consume it with my wife. Well, and think in about smoothie it. In form. I would not want to eat that raw yeah, 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 yeah. as you were saying. Yeah, I would you, not you eat would that would not eat it raw. I mean, I would eat it raw if in I could a smoothie. If I could consume it and get the same health benefits without having to munch on a raw placenta that I'm probably going to gag on, I think I'm just going to make I think I'd throw up. strawberry smoothie and strawberry pretend that the smoothie. red in there is just from the strawberries is what I'm going to do. But isn't it true that if you puree something and like split the cells, it changes it the yeah. So apparently that's that's true about bananas. That if you eat a banana, it's healthy. But if you blend it up, it's actually yeah, really, it's really bad. Well, for it's you. actually really bad for like you. You can't and absorb any of the. See, I don't do research. Fuck. If that ended up being true, then I would eat it. Eat it raw. <laughs> I don't know how much <laughs> He's I getting can. too excited about that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna eat it raw, feet. I don't know how Maybe. much of that I could scarf down though. Have you seen what it looks like? Mm. Have you seen what it looks like? Do you like? think that's considered um? What is it when you eat humans? Cannibalism? Cannibalism. Is it yeah. considered cannibalism? That Wait, holy shit. I have a great question for you, Garrett, because pizza doll is fucking weird for this. Okay. Totally legal, totally allowed. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> no, Al knows where I'm going with this. Totally legal. Okay. You'll never get in trouble for it. Okay. 
Guy hands you a human steak and says you could try it. Are you trying it? Absolutely. I, give me that shit. Give me that fucking shit. He said I was weird. I said, I said, bro, aren't you curious? He said, no. I said, I love trying new meat. He said, nah, that's crazy. Dude, you too sick fuck. It, it, right I, I get that there might be a moral stature behind it. But it's like, I'm saying more, more, no, it morally, too. it's okay. Bro, I'm fuck saying. both of you guys because that's where he went with it too. No one like cares. the guy, the guy no. died and his dying wish stop was it, someone stop, needs stop. to try my meat. You two meat. stop it. You and you get it. to try it. No, Would no, you no. try it? You two stop it. He already said yes. You two stop it. Because you both went to the same place where you start realizing you're getting judged and you go, well, I understand the morals. Well, now it's two against one. Fuck you, Pete. Now it's two against one. We got numbers, bitch. What's up? Listen to me. Because both of you are going to the moral aspect. No one's judging you for the moral aspect. Because we're not talking about it. This is a hypothetical. The fact of the matter is you guys are interested in trying to eat human meat. No, I just I, like new meat. I. Human's one of them. I would not. I have no interest in eating a human. How about I gather? No, no, no I don't have an interest in it. It's you just do. if the opportunity was given. You also admitted that if it tasted good, you would continue eating it. Yeah, I'd finish the If it tasted that. good, would you keep eating it? Well, if I'm willing to try it, I'm willing to I'm finish I'm willing to finish the fucking plate. That's what I said. Like, I've had, I've had plenty Dude, of is, meals that I took up. a first bite of, and I'm like, this isn't the most appetizing thing. But I'm a finish. it served to me, and I'm yeah. going to be polite, and I'm going to morally eat this human yeah. meat. This we human meat, exactly. I'm <laughs> happy Garrett's on the same page as me. Listen, I get there might be some situations where it's You don't, like, like think like, ew, this was a man? Wait, that's what I strictly go to. I but, go, this is a dude. But the thing and is, I'm is, eating him. Mm, nah, <laughs> he he wanted you to eat him though. If you're a highly spiritual person, Garrett, you're, shut you're the at fuck the, up. the highest Garrett, point of shut up. This is yeah, see, Garrett's so existential. Under, Garrett's greatness. understanding. This this is just meat at this point. Garrett, it's just meat. <laughs> like if it's already somebody there. needed, someone's got to eat it, dude. Okay, might as well be me. How about it's I would even have trouble eating meat if it was like crashed on an island, last resort food. Even at that point, I'd if have that guy dies, eating. he's getting fucking eaten. As your friend, that day. As your friend, that day. If there's a life or death situation, I want you to eat <laughs> any meat off of my bones after I'm dead. Where's his dick? As a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Not much meat going on there. Not much meat going on over there. You might be hungry. Would, after. You want, would you want to eat a woman or would you want to eat a man? <sighs> I said a woman, just because they have leaner muscles. See? And it would be like a, it would be like a wagyu. Wait, we gotta stop. <laughs> this is where the it's next getting... podcast guys gonna be like. So I tried it. <laughs> no. It was like, guys, hear me out. This is. I think it's illegal. Is it illegal? Yes. Yeah. No, yeah. Matter, even if someone... no. So a guy actually did it. it can't be that. Illegal. I watched. I watched a thing on it. a guy it did it. A guy did it. No, it's very illegal. Because like, if you're still alive, <laughs> very like, what, like, illegal. Because if I take a piece of your skin, now, how about even where? It can't be illegal. No, that's fine. But if, that's if a guy dies because of like, like how about this guy died and literally the exact story I'm saying where, Ugh. where his, his couldn't do it. He wanted I don't know if it was money for his family or something, but he wrote a whole will saying like my death wish is literally for this specific guy to eat a steak of me from this exact place or whatever the fuck. Hmm. How about the guy who ate him got arrested, like for like 20, 30 years I think. Really? Yeah, like, wow. and it was written in his will and everything, and they were like, you can't just fucking eat people. Well, he and he was like, but he told me to. <laughs> he lost that court case but pretty you know quick. Anyone that ever ate a person, they never say it tastes amazing. Well, I, guess I mean, listen. Like, it's got a taste. Yeah. I don't think that's enough to care to try. What they say, oh, you know what, I mean? fuck, like, what they say it tasted like. You said it tastes like pork. Yeah, like pork, yeah. But like a little weird. Human butcher shops. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The See, black market. They, now, sell, they sell that shit. Now, that right there is where it becomes like a moral, ethical yeah. thing where I'm like, that can't happen. Yeah, that can't Because now you're intentionally taking somebody's life right, to yeah. sell them the as an edible arrangement. Oh, we're good. <laughs> what is one idea or something that people can adopt or something that could change that you think that'll That's a significantly change the world for the better? Okay. And you can take a sec. I'm going and I'll, give you, I'll give you what my idea was. My idea, just to give you a little bit of inspiration, was that if everyone adopted the idea that if you were somebody else, you... Two would make the same mistakes, have the same beliefs. And I think that type of a mindset, that you would do exactly everything they did if you were born into their body, that kind of an idea takes a lot of judgment away from people. And, a lot, and it, yeah. it brings a lot of, of unity to people. So what, do you have any ideas like that that you think that if a lot of people adopted or, or something changed, it'll bring a lot more peace and happiness into the world? It's kind of, I think it's kind of on the same page as, as you. But there's this word that's been floating around on the internet that I saw, like maybe two months I saw it surface. Called Sonder. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with that term? No, tell me. No. Sonder is like, um, I think it's a, a mesh of pondering, so thinking, 
and like S for spiritual, Sonder. Mm. Um, so I think, and I'm not, I don't really <clears throat> know too much about it. It's more of like a complex idea, but it's the idea that you are all experiencing this life together, but from your own reality, your own perspective, like with your own influences and values. And it's kind of the same sense as putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. Yeah. I guess what, kind of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's like constantly having that awareness to know that we're all in unison having this human experience from different perspectives, meaning like the judgment just completely kind of destroys itself when you think of life like that, of mm -hmm. others. Like you, you just kind of, when you put yourself in other people's shoes, you do stop judging so much. And it's yeah. very yeah. hard to do that. It's very hard to put yourself Super in somebody else's hard, shoes. Super hard, yeah. Because you're so wrapped up in this. Who you are, your own ego. Yeah. And that's when it comes back to, you know, toning your own ego down so that you can kind of put yourself in other people's yeah. shoes. Yeah, you, you, become, you become a spiritual observer of all these humans, of yeah. all of us. And then you're like, okay, Garrett's cool. Like me, Garrett's cool. He's all right. But like Peter's freaking amazing too in his own way. You know what I mean? It, mm -hmm. It's. I think we're all beautiful in our own way. I think everybody has their gifts. And you could kind of look at this too as combating like people that are do a lot of evil in their life. You yeah. know what I mean? We can jump and say like one of the worst actions done by anyone, like Adolf Hitler. Yeah. Yeah. That, that man needed to be like, executed from this human experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. But, I think everyone could... Really present. present. <laughs> there had to have been a set of, like, a, a perspective or reality for him at an early age and throughout his entire life that caused him to do such evil things. Absolutely. I can only Something imagine well, well, what they're, he was going They're coming through. out now that apparently he was on meth the entire time, too. Yeah, supposedly. They're, they're finding videos of him, like, at, um, like, watching a football game or something, soccer, obviously, yeah. and he's sitting there tweaking, and they go, that's what somebody that's on meth looks like. <laughs> yeah. This guy was on meth well, <laughs> and speed. Meth. No, so, like, there were a lot more... <laughs> I'm sure he had some other demons going on as well, but, but yeah, the guy was definitely on meth. The entire time ruling it, it adds the Nazi up. Regime. He fought in World War One, and during that time, yeah. methamphetamines they gave to every German soldier Everybody. because you could get shot on methamphetamine yeah. and keep fighting. You, but now these shit. You, now <laughs> like, these German soldiers became addicted to yeah. it, aka Adolf Hitler, and these people are on meth, running a, the German government. <laughs> so, ah, <laughs> uh, Jesus! Right. And nobody talks about that either. Yeah. That Hitler was on meth the whole time. Yeah, which is well, crazy. You know what? No one really talks no, about. Someone with Adolf running Hitler? a whole country, guiding soldiers to war on meth. You know what's crazier? What the fuck? And no one talks about that. Yeah, and who's guiding us? And what are they on? Who knows? Who knows? Let's hope it's not Hitler on meth. But <laughs> I'm sure it's still Wait, not anything. You know what's great. crazy about Hitler? <laughs> you know what's crazy about Hitler? What? We still don't know if we actually killed him. Oh, I know. You know why? You know how we have a piece of the skull? They tested that skull finally. It's apparently a woman. It was a woman. It's not even a dude's skull. Apparently the skull that they claimed, I think was it Sweden? It was, a, it was in Sweden. Did Sweden yep. have it? Sweden it was had, a Middle East uh, woman. Had Hitler's skull. We finally tested it now in later eight days, and it is a woman's skull. And they kept it in the museum. Yeah. And I think that <laughs> we, could, we, could get, wow. we could get deep into that topic, and I think that we still have so much to talk He's about. He's in South America. And even beautiful That's topics, nice. but right, right. we'll get into them next time. We're 100% going to have you back on. Definitely. It's been a pleasure, yeah, yeah. buddy. This was a great Thank one. You. I hope you I guys enjoyed. And if you yeah. loved it, like, comment, share, send it to a friend, show some love, subscribe. And uh, yeah, that's been a Not So PG podcast. I hope you enjoyed. All love, and we are out. Mwah. Mwah. Goodbye.